serving life in prison, a young man looks back at the people, the consequences, and the system that set him on a path toward his crime. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix movie review for the new drama, All Day and a Night, a film that I had mentioned recently in my movie and TV bucket list from May uh, for a film I was excited for. And I'm excited to let you all know if it's worth checking out, give you my score at the end of this video in this non-spoiler review. Before we dive into it, as you all can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my social media accounts. If you're new to this channel, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new content, as well as give this video a thumbs up up really helps out the channel but I also really appreciate it and if and when you've seen this new film on Netflix I want to know what you all thought of it what did you think of the performances the story let me know all your thoughts in the comments below so like I had mentioned this was a film that caught my radar I saw the trailer saw who was involved I love the talent the gentleman that directed the film Joe Robert Cole was a co-writer on Black Panther one of my favorite films of 2018 uh, he also had some writing credits for OJ versus the people so I'm like this is shaping up to be a really interesting project. And again, I'm someone that grew up with a lot of these stories in regards to watching a Boys in the Hood, watching a Baby Boy, watching a Belly. So I kind of, I always kind of gravitate to those films. I always like to see films being brought to the forefront and being uh, brought to the mass audience in regards to Netflix. So starting off with my positives, guys, as I do with all my reviews, um, Aston Saunders is someone that I have been a, a fan of and, and I didn't have my channel back when Moonlight came out, and, and I'm not going to lie, I wasn't the biggest fan of that film. I'm, I'm going to have to revisit it because I, I just didn't remember liking the storytelling, the way you know Barry kind of brought the story to light. But one of the things I took away from that film was obviously Mahersha Ali it was great, but that man. Aston Saunders is someone that every time I see this kid, he always just brings another layer to his character. He brings some vulnerability. He brings some menacing aspects in this particular character uh, that we got with Jaw. I just thought that he was by far the most interesting character. Of course, it was him's story, you know, so you would hope that the lead of the movie would be the most interesting part, but that's not always not the case. But I think on paper, this could have been played at a certain kind of subtle you know, performance, could have been a little bit less of an impact, but I thought what he brings to this character, again, this is a story that you know I, I kind of grew up in a neighborhood that I knew people that kind of had these circumstances that just were brought up in the system, right, where their dads, their uncles, their cousins, their brothers, their sisters were affected by the system in regards to rinse, recycle, repeat in regards to drugs, getting called by drugs, killing and ending up in jail. And then their kids are growing up without their father, their dad, their mom, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, when you're looking at this character, Ja, he, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, right? Because he has dreams to be, you know, and I talked about the negatives towards the end as far as, you know, stereotypical kind of storyline. He wants to be a rapper, right? And which, you know, that's a great dream to have, but his circumstances, his environment, the people that he's around, his his dad played by Jeffrey Wright who I thought was a pretty solid you know performance I'm a big fan of Jeffrey Wright but it was Jaws performance it was Aston's performance that I really felt for right because you you're rooting for him he's doing some really stupid and dumb things but is it the circumstances of what's in front of him it's the life that he was kind of given and, and he really doesn't have much to look forward to so I kind of like that journey that we go on through the character again I mentioned Jeffrey Wright was in it who plays his dad who again is in the system who doesn't learn from his mistakes gets mixed into it with bad people, ends up in jail, and, and his son does the same thing. So there's a there's a lot of messages in this story that I can really appreciate. There's some really good lines. Again, there's a particular line in this film uh, where Josh says someone on his bus told him that slavery taught black people how to survive, but not how to live. So there's like little moments within the film. There is some great dialogue within the film. There's some great quieter moments in the film. Uh, the ending's really tragic in a certain extent, and I won't give that away, but there are definitely things I took away from this film that I can appreciate. Appreciate. Unfortunately, the the, the direction uh, was good. You know, the cinematography I thought was really well crafted. You got to see a day in a life in Oakland, which I'm a big fan of. I have family and friends that live out in Oakland, and I've never been there personally. It's definitely on my bucket list. And I love when films like this and some other films I've, I've seen in the past kind of show a different light of Oakland. Right? There's a dark and scary and, and and you know really bad side of Oakland but there's also some 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 culture there right there's some there's people that do good in that, in that neighborhood and there's things to look forward to in the neighborhood but this does show the more darker elements in the Oakland system um but going back to my cons guys this story there's there's a good movie within this film and there's good moments and good performances but unfortunately for me the structure of the film just was kind of 
convoluted. It was messy at times. We're, we're looking at young Ja when he's a kid, you know, interacting with his dad. We're seeing those conversations. We see this uh, dynamic between him and his two best friends. One of his friends goes to the army. Comes back, doesn't get, you know, comes back and not in a good situation. His other friend, CQ, was in the gang and, you know, Ja doesn't want to be a part of the gang. He does stuff that you would think would put him in a bad position, but he's not selling dope. He's not doing those things like his other friends. So there's like so many different, and then you got Stunna played by uh, one of my favorite actors in Hollywood right now. And I think this man is on fire right now. And that's, uh, you know, Yaya Madul Mateen II as Stunna. I mean, there's so many different pieces and you see the film kind of presents itself where, you're looking at the ending of this guy's particular situation that Jod decides to make at the beginning of the film, and then the, the movie's kind of like like a reflection of his life and how he got there, but it was just so many things, and I felt like at times, and I hate to say this because I really do like uh, you know the message in this film, and there were some solid performances, but there were times where I felt like they referenced their actors like, hey, can you do that scene that was in that one movie, Belly? Can you do that scene that was in Baby Boy? Like, it felt like I've seen this before. It just felt kind of flat with me, the relationship between him and his mom. I just felt like they were like, hey, this is who I want you to play versus like telling a story. You don't really get to know these characters like I would have liked to know them. Yes, you get some moments with Ja. You see how he was raised. And there's this one powerful moment that he has with Malcolm towards the end of the film. And you kind of get a little bit of why he did what he did. But that really doesn't justify his decisions. I just feel like this movie had so much potential, so much goodwill behind it. Again, the messages are there. There's a good performance, but the story and the script just felt so messy for me because again, we're going from here to there. We're talking about this situation that needs to be talked about. Again, people coming back from the armies in this film. There's the system, the systematic, you know, how people, how black people in these type of areas are, you know, compressed and don't have the opportunities to grow and learn and do things of that nature. There's so many good things within the story but it just doesn't have a good through line right it's just so much being thrown at you the ending I thought was really powerful but our character doesn't really learn anything it's just I felt there was so much potential in this film and again there's a lot to be said about it I'm pretty sure people from Oakland people that are in those situations are going to really find a lot of things to grab onto or gravitate to and relate to and I even have things that I can relate to in this film again I didn't even I didn't grow up with my dad he didn't you know, go to jail or anything, but there were some things my dad did that I would not prefer to talk about on this channel uh, that I'm not proud of that he was able to do, and I didn't I didn't follow that path. So, you know, there's a lot that I can take away from this film, but structurally speaking, from a script standpoint, it just felt messy to me, and I just wish that we would have had a better through line. I wish that we could have followed maybe Ja and his dad and just kept it within those two uh, kind of parallel stories, but no, we got to talk about Stunner. We got to talk about Malcolm, we got to talk about coming back from the army. We got to talk about having a uh, growing up without a father. There's so many different elements within the story that they should just focus on a, just a couple couple main points. But again, I can applaud the performance by Ass, and I can you know applaud the performance by Jeffrey Wright. And the messages in this film are strong. It's just that for a movie. It didn't work for me. So with that being said, I'm giving All Day and a Night a 2.8 out of 5. Again, guys, I want to love this film because I love movies like this that show you a different side of the of, of, of certain neighborhoods. They show you how people are, uh, you know, put down and how they're in the system and how they can really, they have certain opportunities, but not they're not given the same opportunities as other people. So I love those type of movies, but unfortunately, this one didn't work for me. But that's just my opinion, guys. But I want to know what you all thought about All Day and a Night that's on Netflix. Let me know your pros, your cons. Did you relate to the story? Did you like the performances? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So as I always mention, guys, I cannot thank you enough for the support on this channel. We're almost close to 3,000 subscribers, so help me get over that. And we're going to continue to have this channel grow and build this community that I just have been so happy with so far. So definitely subscribe, hit that bell, follow me on all my social media accounts. Make sure that you're checking out my content I did yesterday. We did a watch along for John Wick Chapter 2. I did my movie and TV bucket list, uh, Defending Jacob Episode 4. Four, and I'm going to have more content coming for you guys this weekend and uh, a lot of good things coming. So again, thank you for watching this review and we'll see you in the next video.